Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for what you said. And, and I'll remind my colleagues that um, if they would like to go to the funeral for Donald Payne, um, the, uh, there's a plane going on Thursday morning that would be back by the end of the day uh, to Newark for the funeral, who's certainly likely to come. Um, let me just say, I wanted to uh, welcome the Secretary, and it's great to have you again before the uh, Energy Subcommittee, but I, I have to disagree with uh, the Chair uh, in, in this in sort of a general sense that I do believe that you and this administration have done more to achieve energy independence than anyone else since I've been here. Um, you know, if you look at the, the record, the fact of the matter is that this president and you have encouraged um, energy independence by actually increasing the amount of, um, of, of both oil and natural gas that's produced here. Um, when you talk about LNG, uh, for the record, uh, the reality is that, um, that although we have this public interest review um, that is being, uh, that, that you're conducting, uh, the fact is that there are more LNG exports than ever before. Uh, they are, um, anything that's been permitted already um, is already, uh, you know, in the pipeline is constantly being produced. Um, and our allies in Europe uh, have enough uh, LNG for the next five years. Um, this administration and I also take the position that while we prioritize clean energy and we want to move towards clean energy and renewables, uh, that doesn't mean that we're not producing more oil and natural gas. It doesn't mean that we're not exporting more LNG. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're trying, we are also trying to increase uh, nuclear output and new uh, nuclear plants. So I think the, the energy mix that, um, that the chair talked about is exactly what you've been trying to do, all of the above, uh, an energy mix to achieve energy independence. And we're more independent today, in my opinion, than we've ever been under any other previous administration. And I think it's exciting to see all the hard work pay off from both the bipartisan infrastructure law and the Inflation Reduction Act um, these laws are expected to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions, emissions um, uh, in the United States to 40% below 2005 levels by 2030. And these two laws are growing and modernizing our economy for the future, cutting costs for working families, advancing clean energy projects across the country, and tackling the climate crisis while we try to reduce any dependence on China uh, and grow our manufacturing here. Uh, the DOE is at the forefront of implementing these landmark laws, and new funding announcements come out on, from your office almost every day. Uh, since the Inflation Reduction Act passed, companies have moved forward over 500 new clean energy projects, leading to over 271,000 new jobs already. Uh, and I am also pleased that the Biden administration unlike the previous Trump administration, is finalizing energy efficiency rules that help Americans save money and reduce emissions. Uh, these recently finalized energy efficiency standards for residential refrigerators and freezers could save families more than $36 billion over 30 years while avoiding 101 million metric tons of carbon emissions. Now, of course, the committee Republicans continue to target these standards, passing bills that are nothing more than gifts to corporate polluters. I understand we may have one of these bills up as early as next week. Um, and it's just a shame because people want more efficient appliances. You know, I, they talk about freedom to have whatever refrigerator you want. I mean, I think of freedom as, you know, our freedom as a democracy, not the freedom of the refrigerator, but whatever. I, I, we're bolstering American manufacturing with massive investments in domestic manufacturing. Um, but Republicans continue to ignore the fact that other countries around the world, including China, are investing in clean energy and ensuring their ability to compete in a global market. Madam Secretary, under your leadership, we have seen investments over $120 million, billion, I should say, in battery manufacturing and supply chains, and over $35 billion in electric vehicle assembly plants. And these private sectors, essentially the private sector is responding to your actions. And it's great to see American companies leading the transition to clean energy. So I just want to st stress again, what you're doing is working with the private sector, using these investments at the federal level to bring back manufacturing here. 
looking at all above in terms of an energy policy that makes us more independent. But at the same time, we have to be conscious of the climate and the change that's happening and the increased amount of greenhouse gases. And so we do have to prioritize clean energy and renewables, but not at the expense of the other things. So thank you again, and I yield back, Mr. Chairman.